Have a listen to what Australia's former Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull has been saying to the BBC about the bushfire crisis. Bear in mind this history here. Malcolm Turnbull was ousted by the Liberal Party in 2018 in a bitter row over emissions targets and the current Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, took over. Right, let's start with this. Everybody knew we were in a very dry time and as a consequence the fire season was likely to be very bad. So rather than doing what a leader should do and preparing people for that, he downplayed it and then of course chose to go away on holiday in Hawaii at the peak of the crisis. So I can't explain any of that. OK, but under Malcolm Turnbull, the Australian government abandoned plans to set emissions targets in laws. That was seen as giving in to the right of the Liberal Party. Mr Turnbull puts it another way in these tweets. He says, given that a minority of our own MPs were threatening to cross the floor and vote it down, Cabinet resolved to retain the policy but not submit the bill until we were more confident of the numbers. He says pointedly it was formally abandoned by the Morrison government. So, attacks on the right wing of his own party... And he wasn't finished there. No one could say I didn't try, I didn't try to rein them in. I mean, I lost my job twice uh, at the hands of the right. I mean, the, the right and the Liberal Party essentially operate like terrorists. Now, I'm not suggesting that they use guns and bombs or anything like that. But their approach is one of intimidation. And they basically say uh, to the rest of the party, and if you don't do what we want, we will blow the show up and having taken aim at part of his party. Next, it was the section of the Australian media owned by Rupert Murdoch. This proposition that it's a left-right issue, which is what you'd hear in Australia, if you go to any of the right-wing think tanks or you read the Murdoch press, it's just full of climate denialism and, and, and uh, obfuscation. It is designed to deflect from the real objective, which has to be to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. Now, Australia's climate's been getting warmer for years. That's caused by climate change, which in turn is caused by human behaviour. And we know that hotter, drier climate increases the chances of more severe bushfires. Despite all that, you'll still hear this kind of stuff on Rupert Murdoch's Sky News Australia. I don't need to tell you that much of this country and much of the world has gone nuts with climate change exaggeration, alarmism and hysteria. Our tragic bushfires this summer have been used by activists, journalists and politicians here to push their ideological barrow, to attack their party political enemies and to do great damage to Australia's international reputation. They are pushing climate policies that can and will do nothing ever to prevent horror bushfire conditions in Australia. Well, there's probably a discussion to be had over who's doing the damage to Australia's international reputation. Anyway, where to start with Chris Kenny's analysis? Perhaps the Australian Weather Bureau, which says climate change is influencing the frequency and severity of dangerous bushfire conditions in Australia. Or maybe I'm going to listen to the hundreds of leading climate scientists who say the only way you limit climate change is to cut global emissions. And that means Australia taking part too. Not that it's overly enthusiastic. Australia's 2030 emissions target is a 26% reduction on 2005 levels. That's one of the least ambitious targets of the wealthiest countries in the world. Now, Prime Minister Scott Morrison told the UN last year, Australia is doing our bit. Evidently, his predecessor doesn't see it quite the same way.